Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Gabriel's Church for our Palm Sunday service. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. And we begin with number 384 in Songs of Friendship, number 384, Make way, make way, for Christ the King in splendour arrives. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, 
Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Now, for our activity in a moment, we're going to make a palm cross. Well, we're actually going to make a cross out of paper because we haven't got any palm trees growing around outside the church here in Pitsy. Now, yesterday I tried my hardest, either through the post or through hand delivery, to distribute as many palm crosses as I could to many of you. Obviously, if the post hasn't arrived or if I didn't make it to your house, now is the opportunity to make a cross together. Now, we need two bits of strips of paper. I think it's best if you can cut it from an A3 sheet, because um, A4 you might actually run out of paper. Just in true Blue Peter style, I'm just going to show you, this is one that I made earlier. So hopefully it might end up looking like this, and we'll see how we go. Now, first of all, you put the two pieces of paper at right angles, on the table like that and you have just a little bit sticking out from each side now you fold the top one over like that and you fold this one in from the side like that the long bit at the bottom you actually flip up to the top and place it down like that then you take the right hand side and you put that over and you actually put that like that. So you've got a kind of backwards L shape. Then you flip it over like this. The next step is to make sure that little bit is open there so you can take this one and put it through the gap there like that and pull it all the way through so that it's actually locked it's a bit like you're weaving it now you then weave this bit back through the same hole but you don't go all the way because you leave that loop there because this is now going to become the top of the palm cross now you then turn it over like that so you've got that part of the top and the big bar coming out on the left hand side. Now you take the long side and you thread that back through here. Now you may need to fold it over so it'll actually fit through there depending on how thick your bit of paper is. And you take that to the really the arm length you're going to want. So let's say it goes to about about there then you take this one and you push it back through there and it might need to do a bit of adjustment so these two arms are the same sort of length like that and then you could just tuck that underneath itself in there to make it hold in the right position or even come in from the top like that. But of course by this point it's be getting a little bit fiddly. Now 
There we are. And there we have your cross made. Now, we don't mind if you want to stop the video uh, and do uh, re rewind it so you can have another look at what we just did. Okay, we won't mind that at all. But otherwise, um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go back um, up into the sanctuary and we're going to sing a song together. But I shall leave that there for you to see. And the one that we made earlier. We now have crosses, as well as the palm crosses, we've got paper crosses as well. Now, I'm going to get my guitar because we're just going to sing a song before we carry on. Sing Hosanna. You don't need the words of it because you, you've got it very much in your head. It's one of those songs that we sing a lot. I recorded a, an assembly for Eversley School last week, for their last week of term, and we did this song because it's one of their favourites. And very appropriate for Palm Sunday. So we're going to split the chorus. If you've got other people at home, you might want to be in two halves, and one half will be singing. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. And the other half will be singing. Give 
thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. Let the people of Israel say, his love is eternal. Open to me the gates of the temple. I will go in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Only the righteous can come in. I praise you, Lord, because you heard me, because you have given me victory. The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. Save us, Lord. Save us. Give us success, O Lord. May God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the temple of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. With branches in your hands, start the festival and march round the altar. You are my God and I give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. I'm going to sing again. It's um, Hosanna, Hosanna, one of the words that the crowd was shouting when Jesus came into the city. It's in Psalms of Fellowship number 189, or you'll find the words on the order of service. I'm hoping I may get a little help with the playing of this song.
Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple, looked round at everything, but since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the twelve disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Hosanna. Today is the defining moment of Holy Week and Easter. In the story, today is crucial. Jesus had made up his mind. It said he set his face towards Jerusalem. Now there was no going back. Everything would happen just as it had been prophesied for hundreds of years. And Jesus was doing all of it for us. Jesus and his disciples had been making their way south from Galilee to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. It's taken them quite a long time to snake their way past some area and through the countryside and get to the city. But the Passover festival, the most important date in the Jewish calendar, the remembrance of how God had led his people out of slavery to freedom in the Promised Land. And everyone, every Jewish person was supposed to conglomerate on Jerusalem and to be there so that they could celebrate this wonderful moment of salvation. Jesus and his disciples had based themselves in Bethany, which is just east of Jerusalem, um, on the Mount of Olives, and probably in the home of his friends, Martha, Mary and Lazarus, who lived in Bethany. But on this particular Sunday morning, the first day of the week, probably as it was getting near dawn, Jesus sets off on the road down the Mount of Olives. Now some of you may remember when we looked at pictures of Jerusalem a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the temple, and we looked at that road down from Bethany, from the Mount of Olives, up to the Gate of the Righteous. That's where Jesus was heading. But on the way, they stopped in a village, and Jesus said, if you go in, you'll find a colt. A colt is the foal of a donkey that has never been ridden. Now, according to Matthew in his version, the colt's mother was standing there as well. In fact, the disciples went and got both, the donkey and the colt. Anyway, they took this unridden colt to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks over it, and they threw their cloaks over the road, and Jesus got on and began his journey. They cut branches off the palm trees on the road down the Mount of Olives and they put those on the road as well. So this donkey and Jesus had a pathway to tread. Everyone was ready, expectant, joyful. Hundreds of people had gathered on that very first Palm, palm Sunday. Here was the coming of the King. But, and there is a big but with all of this, this was no warrior on a war horse. This was a humble Prince of Peace riding on a donkey. But that would have had a resonance with most of the people watching because years before when Solomon, the son of King David, had been anointed king by his father, he rode through Jerusalem on his father's mule to make a point. This was a peaceful intention. This would be a reign of peace after so much war. And Jesus is simply reenacting that moment, which is why the crowd called out, Son of David, Hosanna, a title given to the expected king who would liberate them from their oppression and bring them back to the Lord. But that crowd, that expectant, shouting, joyful crowd, changed only a few days later. Because Jesus did not fulfil their expectations, because Jesus didn't come waving a sword to kick out the occupying army, their cries of Hosanna, which meant, Lord, save us now, became crucified, kill him. We have no king but Caesar. Well, we have strewn the pathway with palms today, 
You might see them leading up here through the chancel. And there's only one way that they're headed, and that's directly towards Golgotha, the place of the skull, where you can see the crosses of execution. And next to it, the garden with the tomb where Jesus was buried. So that way is an important way, but it's a way now that's set, a way that we cannot change. It's going in one direction. And we are going to follow Jesus this week. We're going to go on that journey with him, that journey of Holy Week, and discover how he gave his life for us, for our forgiveness, and came to his glorious resurrection. But, this is incredibly important. Today is a day of joy. Here comes the King. And next Sunday, when actually we're going to reopen St Gabriel's Church for a, a service of Holy Communion, we can't pack everybody in, but it's a starting point. But if you only tune in today, and then you come next week, or you tune into the service next week when Jesus has risen from the dead, you will miss everything that happens in between. So you can't leap straight from Palm Sunday to the empty tomb. It doesn't work. You have to go through Passion and Holy Week and Good Friday. Join us on this journey. I'll give you some details a little bit later in the service as to what we're doing during the week. But let's go back to that crowd on Palm Sunday. Little did they realise that when they were shouting Hosanna and they were waving their palm branches, and saying, save us now, Lord. They would be saved by changing their cry to crucify and sending an innocent, perfect man to death on the cross. Because through that death, the world could be saved. And afterwards, resurrection would give us the gift of eternal life. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Now we're going to declare our faith together. If you turn back to the order of service, you'll find the affirmation of faith, the questions of belief. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made all things? I believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And now we'll turn to our prayers. I'm going to use some prayers this morning by... David Adam. Holy Father, as Christ entered Jerusalem, let him enter our lives. Let the King of glory come in, that he may rule in our hearts. We may offer our love and lives to him. Christ, broken on the cross, we draw near to you. We come with broken promises, broken dreams. We come as a church divided and not at unity in itself. Yet we seek through you to share in salvation and to bring others to your saving love. Lord, as you give yourself to us, so may we give ourselves for others. This week, especially, we're asked to pray for the church in Jerusalem and the Middle East, the church in Kenya, Uganda, Hong Kong, Nigeria, Australia and North India. In our own Diocese of Chelsea, we pray for the Deanery of Newham. And we pray for their Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Hill, the Bishop of Barking, who has just announced that he'll be retiring in the summer, now that our new Bishop of Chelsea has come. We pray for her, the Right Reverend Gooley Francis de Quartney. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously gives. We pray for a nation that is divided against nation, for peoples that are not at peace with their neighbours, 
for all places of discord and dissatisfaction, for the country stricken by COVID-19. Bless our Lord the work of the United Nations. Guide all who give themselves in the cause of peace. We pray for communities torn apart by hatred. We pray especially for the immigration crises that are affecting so many countries. We think of America trying to deal with the problems in Southern America. We think about Britain and Europe facing still hundreds of people trying to escape persecution and terrorism. Guide us in your ways. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May we accept you, O Christ, as our King. Let your rule begin in our hearts and homes. We pray for homes where there is discord, for homes darkened by deceit and betrayal, for homes where loyalty and love are divine. As we come out of lockdown, as we start to rebuild our communities and our parish, we pray, Lord, for your help. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, be with all who have a difficult week ahead, the scorned and rejected, those who face insult or degradation. We remember those who will be persecuted for faith or principle for those whose spirits will be broken this week. We pray for the brokenhearted and those with broken relationships, for all who are suffering any kind of breakdown, any kind of illness. There are many names on our prayers, names that we want to bring before the Lord. Let's do that in a few moments of silence and ask God to bless them and bring them through the turmoil of persecution. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. We give thanks for the holy martyrs of God, for all who have suffered for others and for truth, for those who sacrificed for us and are now lost. Through your cross and passion, may we share with them in your resurrection glory. Lord hear us, Lord graciously. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now on the back of the sheet, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Jesus, 
Mary Magdalene, another Mary, Salome, one, two others who were there to watch Jesus being crucified and wanting to prepare for his burial. And of course, they were the women who were the first to see Jesus risen from the dead. Now on Tuesday in Holy Week, we're going to have our last Lent course, 10 o'clock on Zoom, and we've been thinking about encounters of Jesus, and this is the encounter Jesus had with Martha and Mary, and he raised their brother Lazarus from the dead. So 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Thursday is Maundy Thursday, and we remember the Last Supper. What I'm going to ask you all to do is, when you're planning your meal for Thursday evening, why not eat kebabs? Kebabs are unleavened bread and roast lamb. Well, shish kebabs are uh, unleavened bread and roast lamb. You can either make them yourselves, or if the kebab shops are open, go and buy them. Because that's exactly what Jesus and his disciples would have eaten at their Passover meal. A lamb would have been sacrificed in the temple, and they would have eaten it with unleavened bread to remind themselves of the urgency they had to leave their place of slavery and be led into the promised land. And while that meal was taking place, Jesus explained how he gave it a new meaning, and it became what we call Holy Communion. He broke that unleavened bread and talked about his body. And he poured out the wine into the cup of salvation and said, this is my blood shed for you. So what I'm going to suggest is that you have a meal and uh, of kebabs around your own table, and then around about half past seven, I will send you a, a link for a live stream so we can all tune in together at the end of our meal and think about how Jesus made that meal into Holy Communion. Obviously, in previous years, and hopefully next year, we'll be able to do it together in the church hall and then in the church. But this week, we're going to do it um, on, the, on the live stream. Friday is Good Friday. And at 10 o'clock on Friday morning, I'm going to have a children's service, a service for children and young people here in St Gabriel's Church. I can't invite you to come, but we will live stream it. So I'll send you the details, tune in at 10 o'clock, live to this church, and we'll uh, work through the amazing journey of Jesus to Good Friday and Easter Day together. Then at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, there will be a pre-recorded service from St Peter's Church, which will be a meditation, the last hour at the cross, the last moments of Jesus' earthly life, and all that Jesus did and said for us at that time. Again, I'll send you the details to them. And then Good Friday evening, on Zoom, there'll be a live service of evening prayer coming from the chapel. So again, if you want to uh, tune into that, it will be really good that you get involved in Holy Week. Don't just wait until Sunday, but live with what happened um, in that build-up to the most amazing day in the history of the universe. Easter Eve, um, otherwise known as Holy Saturday, is often called a day of desolation. It's a day when church services don't happen because we want to live with the disciples on that day and try and imagine what it was like to have lost Jesus to the cross on Good Friday without really knowing whether he would come back to life on Easter Day. So maybe spend a bit of time meditating on those things, and there are some Bible readings for you to, to think about on that day. And then, next Sunday, Easter Day, Alleluia, we're thinking about Christ being risen from the dead. Lots of things happening. Uh, I'll send you all the details during the week. But first of all, we're going to start with a visual at dawn. We did it live a couple of years ago, but of course, because of the pandemic, we've not been able to do it since. But we are going to do it, and I'm going to live stream it. I've recruited members of my family who are willing to light a fire and do some readings and make that moment very, very special as we watch the sunrise. And you can uh, tune into it from the comfort of your bed or your armchair, if you wish. I'm not asking you to fag out and come down here. We can't this year but we will be having that vigil and we'll light the new Easter candle and we will bring it into the church, which will be ready for our reopening. Next Sunday, Easter Day, 9.30, we will be having a service of Holy Communion in here, very similar to the services we had 
Last autumn, when we were open in September, October, November, and the first part of December. So we will have to limit the numbers, and uh, we will only be taking bread and not wine. We won't be allowed to sing, but we're back in church, and we're celebrating Jesus risen from the dead. All I would ask, please, is if you are planning to come, please let me know. And if we find out that we're oversubscribed, we'll try and set up a, a, another service at a different time to get um, some people to come to that instead. But just let me know if you're planning to come next Sunday. There will still be a recorded service going out at 11.15 because uh, I'm very, very conscious of the fact that there will be some people who are not ready yet to come out, not ready yet to come back into any sort of normal life. And I understand that. I will be taking communion round to the doorsteps of those people who don't come first thing in the morning. But uh, the recorded service will still go ahead. And then in the evening on Easter Day, we'll have a live service of evening prayer. So please come and join us for that. Tune in and uh, be a part of it. Wonderful. I have sent you the notice sheet. I'll send all the details around during the week. But hopefully that will um, keep you going. Now, in a moment, I'm going to say the blessing. Then, after the blessing, we're going to have our procession with our palm crosses, either the ones you've received from me, or the one you had left over from last year, or the paper one that you've made, and sing a hymn and do a bit of walking around. But first of all, um, let's finish with the blessing. May the Father, who so loved the world that he gave his only Son, bring you by faith to his eternal life. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you all. Now, I'd like you to um, pick up your cross, your paper one that you made a little bit earlier, or one that you got through the post, or one from last year, and we're going to dedicate these crosses to the Lord, and then we're going to sing um, our last hymn, All Glory, Praise and Honour. And while we're singing that, well, I'm going to walk, march round the altar a little bit, as it says in the psalm. You might want to walk around your front room. Of course, if we were here in church, we could actually process out of the church and, uh, and leave and go home, which would be uh, a wonderful thing to do, but maybe we can't do it this week, so we'll have to do it virtually. Now, hold your crosses up. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, as we sing the song, I do have to tell you that we haven't got enough verses on our machine. So when the machine stops, I'm going to put it on again and we'll carry on singing. So you might just have to pause in the middle of something and then wait for the introduction and start again. But let's stand, get ready to move and we'll sing together.
stay in peace, to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. When you get home, you may want to put your palm cross on your front door or in your window as a sign that you have been processing with Jesus on his journey to crucifixion and resurrection today. Hallelujah.